Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and today we will be discussing some trade rumors that really have been breaking not just over the past 48 hours but regarding some players that have been rumored of trade interest really for these past couple weeks for the most part since the offseason began and that is regarding the Boston Bruins and the Calgary Flames and this was a very interesting trade rumor when I first came across it just two days ago and shout out to Mike at Top Shelf Hockey he was the first YouTuber I believe to actually break out this type of rumor that has been out there so make sure to check out his video too if you haven't he has great content he's been on the channel before talking about the auto centers just want to throw that out there for him because he's deserving of get the credit to be really the first youtuber thus far discussing this but we'll be breaking down here the boston ruins and the calgary flames and the possibility of a significant trade happening between two key defensemen for both teams and as you can tell Brandon Carlo from the Boston Bruins and for the Calgary Frames Noah Hannafin could this actually come to fruition could this be a one for one trade could other pieces be involved how would they make the cap work and all the reasons as to why this is even a rumor to begin with that's what I'll be breaking down for you today so make sure you stay until the end of this video to find out all the deets and all the information regarding the latest rumors between these two teams can a trade happen and if so what can we expect it to be and as you guys can see, I have a happy Gilmore jersey behind me because that's the only Boston related thing I currently have. And it's just a beauty. I had to put it back there regarding the Bruins and the Flames now. But let's get into why this is even being proposed. Well, the Boston Bruins, we know, have dealt with some significant blows on their defense, losing guys like Tory Krug, their best puck moving defenseman, by far one of the best and most well balanced two way defensemen in the NHL today, signed with the Bo signed with the St. Louis Blues on essentially the deal that he was looking for with Boston just for one extra year. I believe it was a seven year deal when Boston supposedly wouldn't go past six, but I know that Boston, from everything that I've seen, did not even inquire on going for an extension with Krug to resign him really over this past year. So. Krug seemed like he was for sure going to be gone once those reports came out. But Zidane Ochara, their captain, their longtime captain, we don't know what the future holds for him either. So they're dealing with some big blows on that left side of defense currently. And to add a significant defenseman, Noah Hannafin, has been appealing to them for multiple years now. They have been rumored to have connections with Hannafin in the past. Being a Boston guy as it is, coming from that area playing it for Boston College, you know, the Bruins tend to fall in that category of liking guys that are originally from the area or play, whether it's for BC or BU, whatever it may be. So in that self, there already was a connection there, but now they, they have this hole on their left side defense. Could they bring in Hannafin and what would they have to give up? Well, breaking down Hannafin a little bit more, he's currently 23 years old. He's six foot three, 215 pounds left hand defenseman. We all know he was a top five draft pick just back in the 2015 draft by the Carolina Hurricanes was then part of that massive deal with another key defenseman a former Boston Bruin and Dougie Hamilton going from the Calgary Flames to the Carolina Hurricanes and in which since then he has been thriving and Hannafin has kind of been so-so with the Flames to say the least but he has a cap at a 4.95 mil for an additional four years and once the 2022-2023 season starts that cap hit is also going to have a modified no trade clause so it won't be as easy to deal him per se but in 70 games played this past season Hannafin had 22 points including five goals and 17 assists the year prior he had 33 points in 80 games so Hannafin is a guy that really hasn't lived up to the potential as of yet in his career when it comes to being a worthy top five pick he hasn't put up those offensive numbers that were maybe expected as really a strong two-way defenseman in the game today and don't get me wrong he is a strong defenseman but he has been a little underwhelming at times for a significant contract that I believe was originally a six-year deal with the Calgary Flames and with their current cap crunch they only have one million cap space that they're currently dealing with they have been rumored for really over this past year to possibly deal Hannafin in the past so it wouldn't really be all that surprising to me to bring in a more young control not even more young a controllable defenseman on that right side that they have been lacking with losing key guys this um, offseason between whether it's guys like TJ Brody who yes he's left-handed but he plays the right side and Travis Hamannick more than likely among others so their defensive depth isn't terrible by any means but they would like to add on to it and Brandon Carlo is definitely a good defenseman to keep in mind so could we have this one for one happen 
Well, let's break down Brandon Carlo now. Carlo, same age as well, only 23 years of age. Similar build as well, even taller. Six foot five, 212 pounds. He's a towering defenseman and a very strong stay-at-home defenseman, might I add. He has a cap of 2.85 mil for one more year than he is in RFA. So it'll be interesting to see if they could work out an extension if, say, a trade is in place. And I would assume it'll probably be around 4 mil, if not less. Maybe he can get him right under 4 mil, but he's probably deserving around that category. Even with the flat cap, he's a very solid stay-at-home defenseman. In 67 games played, however, the second round pick in 2015, he was in the same draft as Noah Hannafin, had four goals, 15 assists for 19 points. Uh, last year, he had 10, 10 points in 72 games. So he has been in the league for four consecutive seasons now. Hannafin has one more season on him with five, uh, five seasons currently. So they're pretty neck and neck in certain aspects of their game. But Brandon Carlo is definitely more defensively sound, in my opinion. He's a guy that I know Boston Bruins fans don't necessarily want to see go. And I don't blame them by any stretch of the imagination because Carlo, even though he hasn't necessarily been amazing for the Boston Bruins, he has been reliable and he's young. He's only 23 years of age. So if you're doing a one-for-one -one defensive swap, how does this benefit a Boston Bruins team per se that only has 6.65 million cap space and is currently dealing with an RFA and Jake DeBrus? So if they bring in, say, Hannafin in a one-for-one -one deal, they're not going to have enough money to handle DeBrus unless they make another trade happen. And how would they be able to do that? That's the biggest question. There's been rumors of a lot of teams trying to, say, um, do some salary dumps this offseason, but to no fruition as of now. Could things change? Yes, they surely can change, but time will tell regarding that aspect. So let's look at this a little bit further here. If say we have a one for one with Calgary, it makes sense to bring in a right hand defenseman to add really be in that top four um, for the foreseeable future. And they could probably land him on an extension. And yes, they don't have the cap space currently, so they would have to probably trade someone else. So could other players be a part of this deal war? As Mike mentioned from Top Shelf Hockey and has been in the articles that have with these rumors coming out really over this past week is that we could maybe see some other players mentioned to make this deal happen cap wise for the for the Boston Bruins side of things, it would be Jake DeBrusque, and for the Calgary Flames, it would be Sam Bennett. Now, looking at that at first glance, that doesn't make any sense to me if I'm uh, uh, Sweeney for the Boston Bruins. I just don't understand that because if that's the case, a two for two, let alone a one for one, I don't think it's benefiting Boston enough here because Jake DeBrusque definitely has more offensive upside than Sam Bennett. I know that they aren't necessarily too far off, but Sam Bennett has yet to be a consistent uh, point producer at the NHL level, even in a more limited role at times with Calgary. Originally a top five draft pick, I believe he's drafted fourth overall back in um. 2014 he was so sam bennett a lot of hype behind him coming into uh after his draft same thing with jake debrusque debrusque has been solid just has a lack of consistency at times in that top nine for the boston bruins debrusque however he's 24 years of age he's six foot 188 pounds originally drafted in the first round of 2015 part of those consecutive three straight first round picks and only debrusque is showing for it thus far in the nhl uh the left winner he's an rfa currently so he'll probably be looking for a cap at anywhere between 3.5 and 4 mil. If I had to guess, I would probably say around 3.5 mil for a bridge deal. I think that would make sense for him, if not longer term. Um, he had 35 points in 65 games this past season, which wasn't bad. 19 goals, 16 assists, but you could expect more point production out of him. While the year prior, he had 27 points, 27 goals, I should say, 15 assists, 42 points in 68 games. That was really his coming out party just a year ago for the Boston Bruins. And now he finds himself in a rather tough situation where he has been in plenty of trade rumors. He's been connected to the Edmonton Oilers because I know that his father works with the um, Oilers organization. So it is kind of odd to see him possibly being rumored to go to the rival of Alberta in the Calgary Flames. Could it happen? It could, but it really wouldn't make sense to me just on the forefront. Can that because now let's get into Sam Bennett here. Bennett, 24 years of age as well, six foot one, 195 pounds, can play both the center and the left wing. However, the Boston would want to utilize him, whichever is more of his strong suit. He's a defensively reliable forward that just has been lacking that offensive upside thus far in his NHL career. He only had 12 points in 52 games this past season in that bomb six for the Flames. And the year prior, he had 27 points in 71 games. What is very odd, however, is the fact that Sam Bennett had his best statistical season to date was his rookie year, his full, his first full year in the NHL, which was back in 2015-2016, in which he had 18 goals, 18 assists for 36 points. Really strong rookie year for him and looked like it was going to be promising going forward. He has not lived up to the hype since then, 
But another interesting factor about Bennett is that he has stepped up in short stints and playoffs thus far in his career. In 30 career playoff games, Sam Bennett has 19 points. In this year's playoff run for the Calgary Flames, advancing past that qualifying round, the, uh, Sam Bennett had a total of 8 points in 10 games. Remarkable numbers for him, and is really standing out as a guy that can be big in key games when the Flames have needed him to. Not so much in the regular season, but definitely in the postseason in a more limited role. So Bennett has that upside defensively. He has shown that ability to be um, performing at the playoff level, which would be huge for a Boston Bruins team in this win now stage. So I guess what I'm basically asking is, for Bruins fans especially, how would he feel about a two for two? I don't think that makes any sense. I know that they would be able to make the cap work in that aspect for the most part. Um, the Flames would be in the negative a little bit in that deal, but they would be able to figure it out, I'm sure. But when it comes to, say, doing a two for two, I'm not. if I'm Boston, I'm not doing that deal any day of the week for obvious reasons. One, Jake DeBrusque is better than Sam Bennett in multiple aspects of his game. If Sam Bennett can propel to be more of that offensive upside, okay, then maybe you have something going there, but that's a risk at the end of the day, and he has not proven that really since his rookie year and his playoff performances. You need to do well in the regular season to an extent to make, um, to really perform at the playoff level. You know, how much woes are you going to have in a regular season to the point where if you have such a bad regular season, you can find yourself out of a job or really being a fringe NHLer, and that is kind of the direction that Sam Bennett could go in. I'm not saying he's going to, but there is a risk factor there. And with Jake DeBrusque, he is a better player between the two. I know that they have been struggling to, say, resign him at this point in time because they're dealing with their defensive situation and just trying to figure out all the other aspects of that lineup with guys like um, Marshawn and or key guy and Pasternak currently out with injury and who knows if they will start the season. Um, but nonetheless, if I'm the Boston Ruins in this situation, if I really want to make this deal, I would try to do... Even a one-for-one one wouldn't make much sense. I think Brandon Carlo is the better defensively mind defenseman between the two. And Noah Hannafin hasn't shown enough offensive upside to really justify doing that one-for-one one and taking on that significant cap hit for another four years with a Boston Bruins team that has already cap stretched. Uh, cap strapped as it is they would have to make other moves happen if it was say a one for one so if i'm boston once again i would add a, i would want to make sure that either a first round pick or a key prospect is added in a deal we're uh especially if it's a two for two i think that would make most sense for both teams the flames i'm sure they could be willing to part ways with say a later round first round pick for next year or say one of their key prospects because i think that is the best scenario for both teams in my mind so boston can either add a significant pick or a significant significant prospect that could help balance out things with the deficit immediately of say being a one for one Hannafin for Carlo or if it's a two for two per se and both adding DeBrusque and Bennett but I'm not even saying that's going to happen I really don't think that's much of a possibility all the rumors that I've been seeing as of late are indication that a one for one is more than likely than say a bigger package it's not inevitable but it is still something to consider. I think a one-for-one one at, at this point in time makes more sense. What they have been saying, at least from the rumors I've been seeing, I'll make sure to let, keep them in the description down below. But I want to know your thoughts, guys, whether you're a Bruins fan or a Flames fan, would you welcome this for Boston side of things? Would you be a fan of bringing Noah Hanfin, Hanifin originally from the area, a Boston College alum, having him with the Boston Bruins? I think that'd be a cool story. He could benefit. He could thrive with a better offense in Boston for sure when it comes to st statistics than Calgary currently. So could he put up that point production like he has in the past? Maybe get upwards of 35 plus points as a cons consistent two-way defenseman in the NHL? Or for the flame side of things, would you be willing to bring in a guy like Brandon Carlo who has that defensive upside and still has the potential to maybe be an average 20 point defenseman in the NHL? You're really not expecting offense from him though, and that's okay. You're looking for defensive reliability long-term and that is what you would be gaining in Brandon Carlo. So would you be in favor of that? Would you be in favor of losing, partying ways with a guy like Sam Bennett who I know has been a grinder, has definitely had his ups and downs, but in key moments, he has definitely been a key part of this Calgary Flames team for these past couple of years. And then when it comes to the Boston Bruins, how would you feel about losing Jake DeBrusque? Again, I don't think a two for two would make much of any sense for the Boston Bruins side of things. It would be a win easily, in my opinion, for the Calgary Flames. So I want to know your thoughts. What kind of hypotheticals could you see happen between these two teams as these rumors tend to heat up as of late? Do you think something significant will come out of this? Or do you think it will stay kind of rumors with discussions being had? Because the reports are indicating that these teams have been discussing. And all these players, for the most part, have been rumored in trade rumors over this past year. Carlo, not as much, but really since the beginning of 
of October is where I've seen more things on him, given he the fact that he is a controllable defenseman that could be a chip to say bring in more of an offensively minded defenseman. But again, Hannafin in my mind doesn't have enough upside offensively speaking at this point in time and that cap hit to justify a one for one benefiting both teams equally so let me know your thoughts in the comments below guys i would love to hear it. and thank you all so much for 2000 subscribers let's get a 3k now i know we will get there soon because you guys are great check out my previous videos especially in the header you see i have boston bruins connection with Ilya kolachuk regarding free agents that um have yet to be signed uh currently in this nhl free agency and my predictions as to where all the remaining free agents gonna sign make sure to check that video out down below and same thing with my previous videos regarding prospect pools and their top 10 prospects. I've talked about the Habs. I've talked about the Rangers. I've talked about the Minnesota Wild. I've talked about um, plenty of teams and the Ottawa Centers and that series I've started regarding NHL teams with the Bryce Futures. I'll be continuing that at the end of this week. That's going to be a fun collaboration with another YouTuber. But regardless, check everything out if you haven't already. Hit like, hit subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of hockey content, guys. Thank you all so much again, and I'll see you guys real soon.